Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Veronique and in this video, we're going to talk about SharePoint Online. I'm going to show you how to create list columns and side columns. What's the difference between the two? And I'll give you a little trick to recognize them when you start creating them. Let's jump in. Okay, so I'm on a SharePoint site right now and I've created two lists. As you can see, I've been very inspired. So we have list one and list two. So we're gonna start by creating list columns. So I'm gonna click on list one and we have a couple of ways that we can create list columns. So we can click on add column and we have a couple of data types that we see. And if the ones that you want to create is not in here, you can click on more and you will be redirected to the page that you made now. And there's also another way. So we can click on the gear icon and we go into list settings. And if we scroll down, we have create column. So if I click on create column, it doesn't tell you in here, but there's one way that you can know that this will be a list column is that if you scroll down, you can see that nowhere it's actually asking you to select a group. And when we're going to create a site column, we're going to have a couple of more options. Let's get name. Very inspired again. My list column test. We're going to keep it simple with a single line of text. And we're going to leave everything as the default and we're going to add this column into the default view. I'm going to click on OK and go back to the list. And now my column has been added. All right, cool. Now let's get into a site column. So we're going to click on list number two and we're going to go through the two methods that we've seen previously. So I'm going to click on add column and I'm going to click on single line of text. At this stage, I would need to fill what we've filled before. And I'm going to click on more option, scroll down. And once again, there is no option for me to add this column into a group. So that might not be the way to create a site column. So I'm going to click on cancel. Maybe if I go into the gear icon and if I go into list settings and I'm going to scroll down. And I can see this add from an existing site columns. And if I click on that, I cannot create a column. I can only choose from potentially groups and then my columns will appear. So this is not how I'm going to create a site column either. So let's click on cancel and let's go back to home. And what we need to do is we need to go into the gear icon, click on site information, view all site settings. And under web designer galleries, we have site columns. So I'm going to click on that. And that is where it tells you that you can create site columns, as you can see at the top. So let's click on create. And I'm going to scroll down straight away. And you can see that this time it's actually asking me where do I want to create this column in which group? So that's different from the list column. Now let's go through the process. So I'm going to give it a name my site column test. Again, we're going to keep it simple and choose a single line of text. We're going to scroll down and then we can either create this site column into a custom column, which is a group. We can also select different groups. I have one in here, or we can create a new group if we want to, but I'm going to put that into my YouTube group. We can give it a description, make this field mandatory if we want to, but we're going to click on OK. So now if I filter with my YouTube group, you can see that I have my site column test in here. So basically it's been created at the site level, hence the site columns. So let's go back into list number two, and this time we're going to add our column. So let's go back to the gear icon. List settings, scroll down, and we're going to click on add from existing site columns. We can search for the column in here, or we can directly filter with the group. And we have my site column test. Select it, click add, 
we're going to leave add to default view and we're going to click on OK. Let's go back to list two. And now I have my column that has been added. Now, so far, it's the exact same thing as the list column. Basically, we have the same display of information. We've created the list, we've created the column, and then added to the list. So what's the difference? Well, the difference is that my site column is created at the site level. So I can reuse it as much as I want. So if I go into list one and I go again with the same process, list settings, scroll down, add from the existing site column, filter, I have my site column test in here. So I can click on add, go back to the list, and I have my list added in here. And I can repeat this process with list and libraries over and over again. In contrast, my list column is only available in that specific list. So if I want to add this list column test into my list number two, I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm going to have to recreate it manually. So that's the difference between a list column and a site column. A site column can be reused within the site when you have to recreate a list column in every single list or libraries where you need that column. So you need to think carefully when you start creating all your columns. Do you want a site column? Do you want a list column? Are you going to reuse it or not? Sometimes it's just very easy to just click on add columns and you start doing that for like five, 10 different columns. And then you realize that you need five of those columns into another list or libraries and you have to do it again, which you'll probably not be happy about. But anyway, I hope this has been informative and thanks for watching.